Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor for today's video, and that's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to make the next step in their artistic journey. There are thousands of classes that you can choose from in topics such as fine arts, creative writing, graphic design, photography, and more. Most classes are under 60 minutes with a short lesson that fits any schedule. The first 1,000 people who click the link in my description we'll get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. If you are interested in more classes on how to develop your artistic style, Skillshare has three more instructors, Rita Sharon, Stephanie Coleman, and Terry Runyon, who all give you their unique perspective. Well, this is something new. He got out of his cage by himself. Ming! I think he's a little bit in shock. He's never done this before. He doesn't know what to do. You got yourself into this. You get yourself out of it. I didn't do this. Dad, what are you going to do now? All right, I'll help you. Ming, again? What am I going to do with you? You can't let yourself out of the cage anytime you want. Get back in. Good Lord. Down. Hi guys, welcome back to Comprehensive Color Blending 2. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lori and I'm your instructor. And if you're not new and you're already one of my students, we're going to continue today studying the way colors blend. Now this is something we've been doing throughout this course, in fact studying tint, tone, and shading is the purpose of this course. If you're new to this class and you want to get the paperwork for it, it's located in the link below and that includes all the reference photos and the sketches. We're working still on the, actually the second picture because we're finished with leaves. And let me tell you, you guys did fantastic. At the end of this course, I'm gonna put some of the finalized pictures together and they are really amazing. Um, and in such a short time, it, beginners are, producing amazing work. So right up in your right hand corner, you're gonna see a card with the playlist for this course. And we're on like class 10, but don't feel that I'm too far in. It's very easy to catch up. The playlist goes right in order and you can work your way through in, in a very short amount of time and caught up to exactly where we are. This course is for beginners and intermediate students. We are using a realistic coloring style. Today, we're going to be looking at some of the hardest color blends that I could possibly find on the internet. The first picture we're going to be looking at is the pearl. It looks really easy to do, a couple, little bit of shading, and that's it, you're done. But if this picture is actually very, very complicated, and if you miss a color combination, your picture will not come out right. Or if you put them down in an order that creates mud. We're going to take a look at this color blend. We have out our color wheel and now this is the 18 point color wheel. It is divided up into 18 different sections. You will probably be able to match any color that is out there in the universe to this one color wheel. It has two sides. They have the pastel side and it has the saturated side. Right now with the pearl we're going to be working on the side that is the pastel side. Now pastel is a tinted color. It's a saturated plus white. So if we take yellow, add white in various degrees, you're going to get all these different colors. Now of course this could be divided up in thousand times. This is for green yellow, yellow green, green, blue green, and so on going around the wheel. This is what I love about this wheel. There are color wheels out there that are similar, but they're not as good as this one. I will leave a link to this exact one in my description box below. This is one of the only color wheels that is geared towards students and colored pencils because most of the wheels out there are geared more towards paint. We're going to take a look at the pearl right now. You'll see up on the screen, I'm going to split the screen so that you could see me working out the colors. And this would be not so much that I'm going to do a pearl, but I'm going to work out the colors for this pearl. And some of you are going to see three colors. Some of you will see four colors. 
I'm going to tell you there is a lot more colors involved in this pearl than you really even realize. We're going to start with a simple circle and I'm going to make it very easy. It's my outer corners are going to be the corners that we're going to be using for our edge. This pearl is not going to have a hard line outside like you would see in a coloring book. It would be more towards what realistic drawing is. So the, we're going to look at the top corner and where the arrow is and we're going to try to identify that color. You can tell that it is a gray, but it's a brown or gray. So whenever you have a brown or gray, you know that that's a French gray. Now, depending on what set you have, I'm going to be using the Prismacolor set because most people are familiar with that set, but you can actually use any set. You're going to just have to follow along. So we're going to look at for the brown grays, and I know that that is not a dark color, so I know it's going to be under the 50% mark. My first tip of the day is you always want to work your lightest to darkest. We're working on the bottom layer and I'm looking at that color and I'm seeing French gray and I'm going to start with 30%. You can always go up from there. So start with a lighter of the colors. So now we have the gray, the outer part of the, we have the outer part color figured out. Now I need to work out some of the other colors that are blending into it. And the next color I see, and I'm pointing at it now, is a beigey pink. Now I can tell you that this color does not exist because it is a mixture color. Okay? It, you're not going to find it in a single you're going to have to come up with that color blend. So the way I work it out when I don't have a direct color, I try to look at the undertone. And you can actually take that picture, bring your wheel right up to the screen. Okay, and if I do that, I'm going to find that color around the yellow oranges in this, in this area. Now, that happens to be the skin tone area. So I know that it's going to begin with a skin tone color. I'm going to look at my skin tones and I always have a scrap piece of paper that I work the colors out on. I'm going to do it on this paper so it all stays together because I'm not really developing the picture. But I'm going to start with my skin tones and the first color I'm going to just put down is my peach beige. I'm going to just test that color so that I have a direction to go in. Now, for any picture that I am working on, I do the same thing. I try to find the direction of going where I'm going. The color that's on the screen is a little bit more orangey pink. So I have to find a color that's going to go with this that's a little bit orange and pink. And we can look at the peach. Now, you could definitely tell that peach is too peach. So it's somewhere, it, the peach is too red. So that color is somewhere in between. I'm going to try a beige sienna. And that's definitely not the direction to go. So I can wipe that direction out. Now I'm going to try a clay rose. Okay. So I've got this color palette going on here. But I'm still not finding that one color. I'm going to start combining these. I'm going to use my peach beige as my base. And then I'm going to try the peach on top of that. And I need just a little bit more red. The redder of the two is the clay rose. And I'm going to work out with the clay rose. And I nailed that color. So this is the second color. And it's a combo color. A base of peach beige. Now you're going to write this stuff down so that you know peach and clay rose. And you will hit the second color. Which goes right in here. What's important to keep in mind is your lay down. Where you lay down a color... You want your dominant color on the top. What color is it? It's going to have a base and it's going to have an upper color if there's just two. So in this case, my peach beige is going to be my base. I need a little bit more orangey in it. 
So this is going to be my middle. And the clay rose is going to be my dominant color, and it's going to be the top. So in this case, I'm not looking at light, medium, and dark. I'm kind of looking at dominance. Which color is going to dominate that trio? And we're going to lay it down in that order. So now we're moving inward where the arrow on the screen is. I want you to take a look at that very carefully. That has a gray in it, but it also has a blue. So we're looking at going from a trio combination to a grayish light blue. And the grayish light blue that that color is, is your cloud blue. And there is a slight layer of cloud blue right in there. But you're going to have to be very careful on this. And this is why it's hard. This combination is really hard. And that is because these three colors here are on the orangey side. What happens when you mix blue with an orange? You get mud, basically. You get brown. So you're going to have to make sure that they blend next to each other. But very little of this blue is really touching and going into this second combination, okay? You always have to look at that because the orange that you're creating in here is going to clash. And all of a sudden you're going to get this weird color that you were not looking for. This color now blends into a grayish white. And I've taken out my cool gray 50. I'm going to start in the middle. Now, why did I go with cool gray? Because, well, that's what it is. It's a cooler color, but it also matches up with blue better than a warm color. So we're going to look at the 50% and it gets really super light. So I know I'm going to need my white pencil. Okay. So I have, this is an old Sanford white just so because if it looks a little bit weird to you that it's not a Prisma. Now you can do this with your polychromos. They have their grays. It's the grouping that you're looking for. You're looking for that peach beige group in other pencil sets, a peach, which has a little bit of an orange in it. And you're looking for the clay rose. Now you look, you have the cloud blue light, which is really a harder color to find if you're using the cheaper sets. The white, the blues do not go down that low. If you do not have a light enough blue that you can find, go extremely, extremely light with your blue and blend it down with white. So it would, you can create that color just by adding a tinge of the blue. You're going to look for a grayed lavender mixed with, okay, it's a grayed lavender. And then you have to think, well, if I put the gray lavender down, that's not exactly that color. What can I use to create that color? Well, it's a little bit mauvey. And your mauvey color would be your clay rose. So let's test out the clay rose. And it's close, but not exact. That's a slightly deeper purple. So back to the drawing board again we're going to look for something that i can add to those two colors that's going to deepen it what's going to deepen it your gray so let's test out a little bit of gray teeny tiny bit of gray in it because we got the hue right add the gray in and where did we hit we hit the exact color combination that we're going to need so our third color combination in this picture is going to be the this is the third one. We're going to do a bottom layer of gray lavender with a little bit of clay rose. And then we're going to deepen it slightly cool gray. And you're going to hit pretty much close to that color. Now, if you can find in your pencil set something that's a little bit closer, that's good. But if I was using the Prisma color set in this situation, this is that combination that I would use. Now, you can always tweak it up if it gets a little bit, as I'm looking at it, it gets a little bit lighter as it swings around this way. What can you do? 
to get it lighter, just add your white as it swings. So you have a four pencil combination over here. Your base, your middle, and your top, which is your dominant color. And in this case, your gray lavender is your base, your clay rose is your middle, and you're deepening the color with the cool gray. And that's why I say it's one of the hardest ones you can do. Eight color blend. That's hard. That's rough. Now let's take a look at the bane of my existence, doing the, the sun. Hint. For these com color combinations, whether you're doing a, a light, it could be a flame, it could be the sun, it could be a light bulb. Main color in it is white. First thing you're going to do when you're going to be doing a sun or any light source is you want to make sure you get that color down on the paper so that you don't go too bright. What happens with a lot of people is they do yellow with white over it. It's not. It's white with yellow over it. And that's another thing that you have to remember that lay down is important. So we're going to do white down on the paper. I'm going to lay that color down. See my my pencil is dirty. I see a little bit of mauve in it. Always clean your white. Okay, now even though you can't see it on the paper because it's white on white, it's there. Now we take our yellow and we don't want it to go in the center of your white. On the very edges, going into that circle of white, very lightly you're going to edge it in the yellow. Now I'm using a lemon yellow. Every set out there has a lemon yellow. Now, for time purposes, I have to go really quickly with this. So, if you build that color up, you can go a little darker around the outside. You can add in, for effects, you can add in some oranges to it. Let's see, I've got a yellow-orange right here, common in every pencil set. You can go to your oranges. The important thing is don't add yellow first. That's not your base color when it comes to the sun. It's going to look like it's got a bright spot. If I had laid down my yellow first, okay, and then try to put my white on top of the yellow, You would never in a million years get that bright white. So it'll never look as if it's blinding you. Like sunsets do. It'll never attract your eyes. So now, and going forward, you know how to do all sunsets, all light bulbs, fire, and neon. It all begins with the white pencil. It took me a long time to figure it out. I did that one for the longest time. Now we're going to get on to our color lesson. We're going to figure out the color combination for the flower leaves that we're working on. Okay, right now we're going to be working out the colors for the bottom leaves on the flower that we're working on in the class. I want you to know, and I <laughs> no diss to anybody that went ahead and did the whole flowers, but none of you got it right. <laughs> so they were very pretty. Don't get me wrong. We're going to do it again today. We're going to be working on those translucent leaves that I'm pointing at. Those colors do not come in your box. And it's done by lay down. We want to get it laid down. Now, the other colors that are in the leaves are pretty obvious. They're going towards your dark greens, your light greens. The color combination that's throwing everybody is that beigey pink. Because it is a translucent color, it's actually two colors on top of each other. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to figure those colors out. And for that, I'm getting out. I'm going to give you some categories so that we can push you towards where the colors can be found in the sets that you're using. We're going to look for what is that color? What is the base on that color? It's a pinky beige you're going to look in your sets and you're going to look for a pinky beige color. Now with Prismacolor, it's kind of on the easier side because we were just working with those colors. And I'm going to get out my clay rose. I'm going to get out my beige sienna. And then I'm going to get out the pink 
that I've been working with for the color color flowers because I know it's a translucent of that color pink. So it's going to have some of that pink in it, but that's not going to be the main color. I've got the colors that I've been working with and I've been working with a... So I've gotten out my flower picture and I stopped with the colors on here before the top. I haven't sealed in any of the colors yet and you can see that I still have a lot of white in there to go, but my colors are basically where they're supposed to be. I'm going to do the same thing with these leaf colors. And I know that as it's going down, it gets very light. And my lightest pink has been blush pink. So I'm going to get out where my lighter color is, and that's blush pink. Now, I redid my flower because I wanted to change the color a little bit. So it got very, very light as it comes down towards those leaves. And the color combination is actually blush pink and white mixed together. Now you have to find on here where my structures are. Now, I drew this by hand, so it's not exactly perfect for the same thing as the reference photo. You're going to have to bear with that. We have the stem, which we have in the picture, the stem. We're working on the next layer, which is this darker layer, which would be right in here. Then I have sort of this area right here, which you can see I didn't include all the lines, but I'll show you where it is. And I didn't include the lines on purpose because I didn't really want heavy lines there. If you need to draw in, they come right around there. And then it shuts back in over here. So these are the things that we're going to be dealing with. These little pieces, okay, that you see in the picture. Now we're going to work out the colors for that. I know it's going to have a pink in it. So I'm going to leave my pink. Then I'm going to look at it and it looks kind of beige like. So I'm going to get out my, let's see, I need a beige color. And we have peach beige. We can try. So let's go to the peach beige. And look, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you can go a little bit darker, but it's going to have an underlying pink in it because you're going to see some of that pink color through. Then some of them, if you look in the main picture, have like a darker brown on them. And this is a Burnt Umber by Starjoy. You can get out your Burnt Umbers. You're going to know that that's going to be in it too. And let's see, that's pretty much it. So we're going to lay down your beige as your first layer. You're going to put your lightest pink, whatever that pink is that you're working with, as your second. And your third color, where you need the darker areas, is going to be a very light hand of burnt umber. So we have burnt umber, and that looks like this. That's in every set out there. Your lightest pink that you're working with personally. And then you're going to combine it with a beige. And this one happens to be peach beige. So you're going to just kind of have to look what set you have and what beiges you have. If you don't now that we have the color combinations for, for the leaves that go near the petals, we're going to work our way downward. I want you to take particular notice of how it blends into the green. You can achieve that color by just adding the green on top of the beige that you just created with the pink, the beige, and the burnt umber. But if you take a really, really close look at it, you'll see that it's variegated shades of green. 
Now look where I'm pointing now. Those, there's dark green in here. There's dark green in here. There's dark green over here. Take notice of where those spots are. The more of those spots that you include in your picture, the more realistic your picture is going to be. Now, as you move on to the bottom leaves, I don't know what these are called. I'm not a botanist, so sorry. I'm just calling them leaves. Right where I'm pointing now is the same color as over here. So all you need to do is use that color over here and then add in a dark green. And the same thing goes for the bottom. Pay particular attention to where the color changes are and make sure you include those color changes. It's not as many pencils. The colors are not really changing. It's where you're integrating these colors. When I do the demo in my next video, you'll be able to see it a little bit closer. And it's fun to practice. Just go out onto the internet, find a picture, and try to find the colors. There's going to be some you will find directly in the box of, of whichever colored pencil that you need, and some you have to create. And with that, I will see you in the demo. Take care. Bye-bye.